Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Dina Atta. I'm working as a petroleum engineer at Khalda, at Khalda Petroleum Company. I will be the session moderator today. I would like to uh, welcome all of you, and I would like to welcome Dr. Salah al kidatni He is our presenter today. Let me introduce him to you. Dr. Salah is, is Associate Professor at Kingdom, uh, at King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals. He is Associate Professor at Cairo University on leave. He worked as a Senior Geomechanical Engineer at Advantic International Company for five years. Also, he worked with Suku Oil Company as Drilling Engineer for one year. He received his PhD in Petroleum Engineering at Texas and M University College Station, Texas. He received his PCC and MSCC degrees from the Petroleum Engineering at Cairo University. Um, his area of research include drilling flood optimization, filter cake removal, formation damage, oil, oil well cementing, artificial intelligence, and geomechanics. Dr. El Katatni published more than 100 journal papers, presented more than 150 conference papers, and he has more than um, 40 US patents. Um, now, uh, Dr. Salah, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dina, very much for your nice introduction. Hello, everyone. It's uh, my pleasure to be with you this evening. Uh, with this large number, I'm so happy to present one of the basic topics in the uh, drilling engineering, which is about the rig component. So, uh, as, as Dina mentioned, I'm working as a social professor uh, at the uh, King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals. And uh, also I worked like, after I finished my PhD, I worked at Cairo University for two years as uh, assistant professor and I'm on leave from there now. And I hope one day we'll go back to Cairo and uh, continue the teaching process. Uh, so uh, in our topic today, I will go through uh, two parts. The first part, I will review just the uh, common uh, known uh, drilling uh, rig types. And after this, I will go through the, uh, the rig component or rig systems. Uh, as you know, we have different drilling rig types like land rig and marine rig, or onshore rigs and offshore rigs. So, uh, and this rig can be classified according to the application. Like for example, in uh, land operation, uh, we can classify the rigs as uh, heavy land rig, light land rig, ultra heavy, and medium. Uh, while for marine rigs, there are different classification according to is it supported from bottom or not. So we have floating rigs like drill ship and semi-submersible, and we have bottom support rigs like jackup, uh, platform, or barge. And for sure, this will be depend on the water uh, depth. So uh, all five of rigs, it contains the same basic component or the same basic system. And uh, for the land rigs, there are design features that should be known, which is the uh, portability, how we can move the rig from one place to another place, and the maximum operating depth. While for the uh, marine or offshore rigs, either which is either uh, bottom supported or floating uh, equipment or rigs it can the main design feature is the also the portability and the maximum water depth. so the main difference in the design feature between the land rig and offshore rigs for land rig is the what uh, is the uh, maximum depth that we need to drill and for the marine rig is the water depth. So uh, the land rig can be classified according to the depths, as I mentioned in the last slide, to light rigs if we will drill to 2,000 meter, or medium rigs if we will drill up to 4,000 meter, heavy rigs if we will drill up to 6,000 meter, and ultra heavy if we will drill more and more. So uh, what we mean by heavy or light or medium? It's according to the capacity. So as you know, we have the derrick, and the derrick is from steel, and it has a certain limitation to the maximum load that it can carry. So the maximum load for sure, it's a function of the depth, which is the length of the equipment that it will be carried by the uh, derrick. 
also as a rule of thumb uh, it's uh, it's known that we need at least 10 horsepower to uh, drill around 100 feet so uh, the land leak can be classified also according to the horsepower with the same classification like for light rigs it requires 650 horsepower and for heavy rigs uh, around 2000 horsepower and for ultra heavy rig we, we need 3000 horsepower and more for sure, according to the portability, we have the Zealand rig can be classified or for the cantilever rig, which is a conventional rig that be assembled in place and it, uh, it's uh, raised using the hoisting system. Or it can be like the uh, mast, which is a portable mast that can be moved from one place as a one piece to another place using the truck and it can be raised like the telescopic uh, operation. Uh, for sure, for the uh, offshore rigs, as I mentioned, the uh, water depth is the main factor. So if we are in shallow water, we can use barge. And uh, if we are in very deep water depths, like if we have like 5,000, 10,000 feet or more, we can use the drill ship. For sure, the compilation for each well will be completely different. The way it will, uh, uh, the way we drill it, the way we control, where it will be the equipment, it will be depend on the water depth that we have. From this one, we have, I mean, from the offshore rigs, we have the fixed platform that it's permanent, fixed platform it should be, be built in place. It will be permanent. It has slots for different uh, wells. And for sure, we have to drill, some of these wells will be drilled vertical and we have to drill the other ways as a direction drilling to cover the wide range of the reservoir section. And this one will be fixed forever. So after we finish the drilling, the completion part and the production uh, facility will be built on this platform uh, and it will be used for production and accumulation for the hydrocarbon. And after this, we can use different ships to uh, transfer the oil to whatever place we so uh, let us start or go to the main topic of today, uh, the presentation, which is the rig components. So as you know, we have different or many, many equipment in the rig. Like we have the crown block, the cat head and hoisting line, the drilling line. We have the derrick, we have the two work, we have the uh, substructure. This is the, the main part is that you can see everywhere you find a drilling rig. And besides this, you have different tanks. We have uh, a large uh, uh, pool like waste bit we used to accumulate for the cutting. And we have for sure the well control equipment, which will be uh, below the uh, floor or uh, during in the area of the substructure. So as we have all of this equipment, we have to classify them into a different system. So we can uh, uh, know what is the main part of it, what is the main function of it, and what is the uh, practical point for every part. This is very, very important. For sure, you take some of this information in the uh, BET 101 or the first drilling engineering course, but I, I will do my best to link this one with the practical and the main uh, application required for all of this. So we have almost six uh, grading system for every rig, either offshore or onshore, uh, which is a hoisting system, rotating system, circulating system, controlling system, power system, and the new one is a monitoring system. So if you review some of the old books, you will see that's five system only, but for the uh, recent publication or recent work, uh, which is a monitoring system. Uh, as you know, uh, it started from 2013, 2014, that real-time recording for all of the drilling parameter uh, using the brakes. So we have real-time sensors for uh, measuring the different parameter of the drilling operation. And we have a huge data from the drilling operation. So we need to uh, go quickly over all of this system and understand what is the main function of it. So let us start by the hoisting system. 
the main two parts of the hoisting system, just when you look to the rig, you will see the mast and the main function of the mast. First of all, it should provide the capacity of carrying the load of the drill string or different strings that will be run in the pool. For sure, the most or the highest heavy, the heaviest part that will be run in the uh, well is the casing. So because the casing may be reached from the surface to uh, down to uh, 10,000 feet, and it has a high weight, on, uh, a high, a high uh, nominal. So according to the design, we should determine what is the maximum weight that we need. And based on this, we can select the mast or the derrick. We call it mast or derrick. So, and this derrick, it provides, uh, as I mentioned, the capacity or the load. And in addition, it provides the height that's required to go down or lower the equipment in or raise the equipment out from the hole. So almost this one, for sure, it's the height is more than 90 feet, which is the uh, length of one stand of the drill pipe. So this derrick is fixed on the substructure or the uh, floor that you can see it. So the substructure, it provides different function. The main function is to carry the load of the derrick and the heavy equipment on the floor. In addition, it provides space for the well control equipment, not only the well control equipment, but also the well head equipment. As you know, after we bought the first casing, we installed the casing spool. And after this, we bought uh, another casing spool. Uh, finally, we bought the tubing head spool. So all while drilling, this space or this height will be filled with different equipment. So we need to uh, have enough space or enough height to move this equipment up and down. And for sure, during the drilling operation, when we change from a casing or finishing one casing and we need to drill another one, we need to put uh, the uh, wheel head. So to install the wheel head equipment, we have to remove the BOB. So we have to raise the BOB up and move it little bit. So we need this space to be there just to allow us to control with the uh, wheel control and uh, wheel head equipment. So the hosting system consists of some main parts that we should know in addition to the derrick and the substructure, this is the main one. In addition, we have the draw work, which is the heart of the hoisting system or the drilling operation. And its main function, it provides the uh, force required to raise or lower the drill string or the casing string in and out from the hole. We have the drum, we have the drilling line. The drilling line comes from the uh, storage supply or storage reel going through the deadline anchor. And the deadline anchor is used to stop the feed of the uh, drill, uh, drilling line. So we have the drill line anchor and the drilling line will go around the crown block, go down to the traveling block and to go back to the from the crown block to traveling block on a sheaves. And finally, it will go to the uh, uh, drum or the drill work. And this is, we call it the fast line. And for sure, we call this one fast line because if we need to move, the traveling block and hook one feet, we have to move this line one feet multiplied by the n number of lines here between the crown block and the traveling. So this is the main equipment of the uh, hoisting system. As we have some picture for it, this is a crown block and the crown block is static. It will not move. It's the top upper part of the derrick, it contains the, uh, cr uh, the crown block, and it has some sheaves, and these sheaves is used to round the drilling line from this place to the traveling block. The traveling block and the hook is a moving part. It moves up and down based on the operations that we need to do it. And you should know that 
the hook is connected to the traveling block and it's used to hang the string that we need to move it or any equipment that we need to move it inside the well or outside from the well. The weight of the traveling block and hook is not an easy part or as light part. It's around 23,000 pounds. So it's a very, very important to take care of the drilling line because otherwise if the line cut, so you will see around 23,000 pounds falling down and that happened before. So the safety here is very, very important. And this is the main part why we study the hoisting system, not only just to show the equipment, but we need to see when we have to cut the line or to change the place of the high friction point, which is the point where the line will go around the sheaves. So this point will be weak with time. This point, there is a erosion with time. It will be weird and we have to cut or change this piece. We have the uh, draw work, as I mentioned, this is the heart of the drilling line. It contains a drum and for sure it contains also the breaking system. We have manual, manual break and we have also auxiliary break system just to uh, allow us to go down or up or stop the movement. And uh, here the line is around the drum, the drilling line, and it will go to the, this first line will go to the crown. This is the actual place of the uh, drum or the draw work. It's on the left side of the driller on the old rigs. But now because we have cyber chair, we have additional room here where the rig is sitting and manage the operation from inside the room rather than what we're standing here and operating with the old system. In addition for the drum, we have the cat head and the cat head is one from both sides. We have cat head right and left from the drum. And this cat head is very, very important. It has one line which is connected to the tongue and these tongues are responsible to provide the torque required to connect different drilling uh, pipe. So as you know, we can just rotate the pipe, but to provide a torque, which is responsible to hold the connection between these two joints, it's very important to provide with a specific torque. And the uh, cat head is responsible by the line connected to the tongue, it's responsibility to provide the required uh, Torque. In addition to this, we have uh, the air winches or air hose, which is used to, uh, there is a line going from the air hose to the crown block in additional sheaves. And there is a line is going down from where we can carry any heavy equipment on the floor because we cannot uh, carry it by human or workers. So we have to use the hoisting is uh, an air hose to provide the uh, the way to move the heavy parts on the on the floor from one place to another place. Okay, so this we cover the uh, the main equipment for the hoisting system. But as I mentioned, the most important thing we have to number one to select is the load, the derrick, which is able to determine the load. So we have to determine what is the load that we it will be. Uh, carried by the derrick. So we have two ways or two methods. Number one is to determine the static derrick load by if, if this is a hook load and we have four lines, so the weight will be divided into four lines. So we have the first line load, which will be in a static condition, will be the hook load over four and dead line load will be the hook load divided by four and in addition to the hook load itself. So we can determine the static direct load, which is equal to N plus two over N multiplied by the hook load and N is the number of lines. This is one step, but for sure if we have friction, so we have determined the efficiency and from this efficiency, we can determine the first line load, dead line load, and we can determine the dynamic direct load or the dynamic crown block load which is the submission of this one. So why is this calculation is very important? Because we have to determine the design factor 
which is very important for every drilling line. So as I mentioned, when I started the hoisting system, we need to cut some parts to avoid the warming or uh, the weak points of the line. So to determine this one, we have to determine, we have to determine the design factor. So the design factor is equal to the normal strength of the wire rope, which is a drilling line divided by the first line. So we have to determine the first line load. In addition to this one, we have to continuous calculate the cumulative work done by the drilling line. So the work done by the line, we call it the fan mines. So uh, according to the operations that we have, we have different fan mines, like if we will go round the trip, and we mean what we mean by the round the trip is moving from the surface or the floor to a specific depth without drilling, just running in the hole. So this is called round the trip one. After this, we will drill or we will make coring or whatever we will do in this well, we call it as drilling or coring. When we finish this section and we need to run up to the floor again, run out of the hole, we call it second round trip. So we can determine the round trip, the 10 miles while round the trip using this equation, which is a function of the uh, drill strength and it's a function of the uh, depth that we are drilling. For sure, there is a long derivation for this equation, but just I, I put here the ton mile and I will tell you why I, I, I go through this calculation. So if we are in drilling, the ton miles equal to three, the difference between the round the trip two, negative round the trip one, and also the coring equal to two multiplied by the difference between round the trip two and round the trip one. If we are in a casing, for sure, we, we can determine the ton mile of the casing, which is a function of the casing weight, the depth that we have, and I put here or of the parameter for this one. Okay, so now we know that from the safety point of view, the company that provides the drilling line, it said, okay, like for after 100 ton mile, you have to slip and cut. You have to cut some part. You have to move the wearing part around the sheaves. So how we can determine this one? We know the ton miles. So for example, if the cumulative work to reach it to the designed one, according to the design factors that you calculated. So from these two, we can determine what is the slip and the cut. So the worn part must be cut and removed at a regular time. The process is called slip and the cut. And the length can be calculated as a function of the number of labs, which is around the drum, multiplied by the drum circumferences. And the drum circumferences is the diameter multiplied by pi, multiplied by the number. So now I need to determine the number of the labs that should be cut. To do this, we have to go to the ABI specification for this drilling line. And for example, According to the direct height, which is very, very important, this is the most important part that I explained to you, the height of the direct. So according to the direct height and the drum diameter, we can see what is the required number of drum uh, of uh, lamb of labs that we can cut. For example, if we have a height of 187 and we have a diameter of 30, so we need to cut 14.5 lab. So we can go back and multiply, uh, apply this equation and we can determine the length of the drill, uh, drilling lines that should be cut. Please don't forget, it's a function of, to go to this, uh, this table, it's a function of the design factor and also it's a function of the ton miles that you calculated. So the main objective of studying the hoisting system, in addition to no the knowledge of the equipment is to go through the slip and the cut process. And this is the safety point while uh, drilling uh, operation. Now we will go to the rotating system, the second system, which is very, very important. And the main objective of this one is to provide rotation to the bed, the drilling bed. As you know, to drill or to cut a rock, 
we need two things. Number one, we need a rotation. And number two, we need to provide weight on bed. As you can do in your home, in the house, if you need to hang anything, so you need to make a hole. To do this, you use the driller. So what you actually do, you put it on, so there is a rotation, and do you push it by your hand, so you provide weight on it. So this is the mechanism of drilling or cutting the uh, rock. We have different systems to, uh, to, for the rotation system. The old system, which is the Kelly system, in which we use the Kelly, and the Kelly can be hexagonal or can be square. And this Kelly should be connected to the Kelly bushing, and the Kelly bushing is connected to the master bushing, and the both of them will be connected to the rotary table. Okay, now how the rotary table will rotate. We have below the floor, we have a motor and shaft is connected to the rotary table to rotate. The uh, disadvantage of this system that you can only drill the length of the killing, which is around 40 feet to 54 feet. So we can say we can drill one joint of drill pipe, which is almost 30 feet. So now, after you drill us, uh, uh, 30 feet, you need to disconnect the Achilles and put it where? In the rat hole. So in the floor, we have the rat hole just to, to store the Achilles. In addition, you have to pick a new joint from the mouse hole. So this is the system that we can to rotate the uh, drill string. For sure, in addition to this, the Achilles, it should have uh, a high, higher strength uh, than any part of the drill string because it holds the total weight of the drill string while drilling, especially when you uh, pull out of it. So uh, the other thing that we use for rotation is the top drive. So the idea came from where we take just, we need to rotate the string. So we take the motor from the uh, rotary table and we put it above the uh, drill string. So the top drive, it's a very simple part. It's connected to the, um, for sure, the uh, crown block and the hook. And for sure, there is one part that I will explain it to you, which is the swivel, which is very, very important. And from down, it connects to the drill string. The uh, top drive can move up and down using uh, this uh, steel behind it, just a sliding up on it, like elevator, going up, going down, and it can go to the other point and take the drill pipe. So now for the Achilles, we, we obtain the joint from the mouse hole, but when we apply the uh, top drive system, we obtain the pipe from the uh, monkey board. So we have here the monkey board, the pipe stand, stands of the pipe, which is three joint, as you can see, which is around 90 feet. It's organized here to be picked up by the top drive from the top, and we can use it for, for fast connection and drilling. The advantage of using the top drive is not only to drill just one stand, it's also used to reduce the time for non-circulation because you reduce the time for connection. So now we reduce the time for circulation. Circulation is very important while drilling to be sure that the hole is clean and all of the cutting out of the hole and to maintain the stability of the hole and also to change the drilling fluid inside the hole. If you keep it, the temperature will play a major role of the property of the drilling fluid. This one of the rotating system is very, very important, which is the swivel. Swivel is used to connect the uh, the hose, the rotary hose, which contains the drilling fluid, and it goes inside the drill string to provide a bath for the drilling fluid to go inside the string. And also it prevents the rotation or the movement uh, of the uh, pipe to reach to the hoisting system. You should be aware of that the string is rotating, but the drilling line and the crown block, uh, traveling block, is going up and down without any rotation. If it rotates, it will damage the whole process. For sure, the uh, rotary system 
is used to rotate the drill string, which consists of the drill pipe, drill collar, and accessories. And finally, you have the drilling bit. And as I mentioned, the, uh, the, uh, we need to drill. So we need to apply rotation, which come from either the rotary table or the top drive. And we need to apply the weight, which come only from the way uh, the drill collar, as it it's a heavy collars, heavy joints that's used to provide the weight on bit. And the drill pipe should be kept under tension. It will never add any uh, weight on bit. Uh, and also we have a heavy wood drill pipe as a transition zone between the drill collar and the drill pipe. And uh, this is from mechanical point of view, because you cannot, it's not recommended to go from a thick wall drill, uh, drill collar to a thin wall for the drill pipe. We need a transition zone, but also the heavy wall drill pipe is not recommended to provide weight on bit, but it can help you to raise the neutral point, which is a point where there is no compression and there is no uh, tension. So it, instead of applying 75 or 80 percent of the weight of the drill collar, you can apply 90 or 95 percent, and you will be in a safe mode. The uh, third system that we have is the circulation system. Circulation system is, uh, is like uh, the blood system that we have in our body. So the bomb is like the heart and its responsibility to inject the uh, drilling fluid inside the hole and push it back to the surface through a very simple operation, very, very important. And it's very important to control the uh, circulation system. So the circulation system starts from the pump. It will inject fluid to the, uh, the hole and it will go out from the flow line going into the shell shaker here. They will explain it to you and shell shaker will remove most of the cutting. Almost 80% of the cutting will be removed by the shell shaker. And we have a waste bit here just to store the uh, wastes here. And we have from the other side, as you can see here, we have the solid control equipment and this room for the drilling fluid testing part. So uh, I will go quickly through uh, all of this equipment that we use it. As you know, we start from the active tank. The active tank is connected to the pump, mud pump. And this mud bomb will provide a very high pressure here. So this is the required pressure to circulate one barrel from the surface through the drill string and going back to the shell shaker. And this may reach to 3,000 psi, 2,500, 3,000 psi. And it will go through all of the system and it will come back to the shell shaker. And you should know that the pressure at this point is almost one atmosphere. So this is the hydraulic uh, calculation and we call it the pressure loss calculation. And this is very, very important to be known because it will not only affect on the selection of the pump, but also it will, be, it will affect the formation from the other side, the downhole formation. If you apply a huge pressure or the pressure goes out of the bit, it will be huge, it will frack your formation and you will start losing, losing, losing your fluid. We have different type of mud pumps. We have duplex and we have triplex according to the number of cylinders that we have or the number of pistons that we have. And also it can be classified according to the mechanism of discharge. We have single acting pump where you can suck from one side, one stroke, and when you go back, you will discharge from the other side. But we have double acting, which when you suck from one side, you will discharge from the other side. And the vice versa, when you go for this side, you will suck from the left side and you will discharge from the right side. And why this is important? Because you have to determine what is the bump output. Bump output is very important while the drilling operation. It will provide uh, the uh, volume of the fluid injected in the hole, and we can determine if we have losses or no, according to 
the type of the losses according to the formation. So if we inject one barrel, we should ex expect that we will receive one barrel. So we have different type of losses according to the number of barrels. Uh, we have seepage loss, we have partial loss, we have severe loss, and we have total loss. So it's very important to determine what is the bump output. And generally we have the duplex bump, it's double acting, and the triplex bump is single acting. And for sure we can use this formulation to determine the bump output. So bump output is very important for two reasons. Reason number one is to know about the losses. And reason number two, it's very, very important to while the wheel control operation as we have to slow the pump down to the slow pump rate. And we should know what is the slow pump pressure because this will affect all of the calculation in case of oil control or in case of we have a kick and we need to circulate the kick out of the hole. You should know that for the drilling operation, we should have a backup. So we have two pumps or three pumps working. So one is working, the other one or the other two uh, are just uh, standby because we cannot stop the drilling operation. And it's your responsibility as a drilling engineer and as a company man to be sure that you have the backup uh, and you should do inventory for the equipment and to be sure that you have all of the connection, all of the equipment, and you have backup for it. As you know, the, re the rent of the drilling rig is very, very expensive per day. And not only the drilling rig, you will see that you have many, many companies, surface company, companies working with you. So you, you will pay for this uh, waste time or we call it in the drilling operation, we call it non-productive time. So as uh, drilling fluid will inject it to the hole and the coming back to the shell shaker. Shell shaker is the first part and it will go through all of this equipment. I will explain it to you one by one. So it will go through the shell shaker, the gather, the sander, the silter, and sometime we have mud cleaner, sometime we have centrifuge, and finally it will go to the active tank. And this active tank will be connected to the pump, which will bump the fluid into the hole again. So, uh, and you can see here there is, in addition to this, all of this equipment, we have another vertical separator. So let us start by the shell shaker. Shell shaker, as I mentioned, it is the main part of removing the largest cutting size. And this is the first solid control equipment. It removed almost 80%. And uh, the way it will work is just by shaking. We have motor, it will move this one. Or either in this, uh, I mean, uh, either lo longitudinal or just horizontal, just to move all of the cutting. The cutting will go to the waste bit while the fluid will go back to the tank. And we have the first tank that we have it, the shell shaker from one side, and there is, the tank is separated to, into two parts. The other part is, we use it for settling. So the, the larger particles that pass from the screen, it will settle down in this one, and we, take the, we will take the fluid from upper part for this one. After this, we'll take the fluid, we will go to the degather, and we'll, or the vacuum, the horizontal separator, and this one working by vacuum pump, and it's used to remove the gas cut, the gases from the gas mug. And you should know this one is only used in the normal operation, but in case of we have a kick, it's not recommended to use this one because maybe the amount of gas are high, we have to throw the shock manifold, and after this, we have the vertical separator that can be used to separate a, a larger amount of this. For sure, you know, if, uh, the, if the gas existing in the drilling fluid, it will affect the uh, mud property and reduce the density. After this, we have the desunder, and the, sun, the sunder is used to remove the sand or any uh, particles which is greater than 40 microns and it's working by the uh, centrifugal force. So the fluid will go from this line under high force of uh, centrifugal force. The solid will go down and the fluid will go up and it will go to the other tank 
where we have the desilter, and silter is used to remove the silt particle, which is in an average size of 20 to 25 micron. But you should know that if the solids lower than this one, it will be remained in the drilling fluid and it will change the properties of the drilling. So one of the most important thing also to be known about the desunder and the silver, there is a dis discharge or the waste drilling fluid from this equipment. And this equipment, in the case of oil-based mud, it has a high discharge value. It will make waste of the drilling fluid with a larger volume. So it's not recommended to be used with the uh, sander and silica. And this is very, very critical because if you have sand and you didn't apply the sander in case of oil-based mud, so the sand will be a part of your drilling fluid. It will change the radiological properties of the drilling fluid. Also, it will be part of the filter cake, format filter cake, and it will be very difficult to remove it. In addition, if you didn't chemically remove the filter cake and you depend on the mechanical way or you depend on the, uh, the uh, pressure of the reservoir to remove the filter cake, the sand existing in the filter cake will make erosion to the chop uh, in the production system and it create many problems. We have the mud cleaner. Mud cleaner is a combination of the desunder, the silter, and the shed shaker together. And this one is only used if the uh, shell shaker is, no, is not working properly. And, and it also has a discharge value and they call it three equipment in one equipment. So if we have a very fine solid particle and we need to remove it, we can use the centrifuge. Centrifuge is used to remove the very fine particle, even the weighting material. It has separated the weighting material from the drilling fluid. And this is very critical because we need to use it again to raise the, uh, the density of the drilling fluid used in this one. So the circulating system is very important. And the one of the most important to know about the circulation system, we have to determine the pressure loss calculation in the well required to circulate one barrel. And based on this one, we can determine the nozzle size of the pit and we can determine the specification required for the pump. So it, you should understand the circulation system and you should know what is the uh, calculation behind it and why we need it. In addition to this, it's very important to know the pump output, which is required to know if we have losses or not. And also it's required to know, uh, to be known while killing operation. Controlling system is one of the most important systems in the rig. For sure, without control, we can drill. So uh, we have different well control equipment. But before going to the equipment, we have to mention this. The main controlling system on any well is the hydrostatic pressure of the drilling fluid. So it is a main responsibility of the mud engineer to design the drilling fluid with a proper way to provide sufficient pressure to control the formation pressure. So the primary control is not the equipment. So the equipment is the secondary control part. So for the equipment, we have two different types of the equipment. We have diverter and we have the blowout preventer. So the diverter, there is no back pressure in case of the diverter. Usually, commonly it's used to drill the surface hole where, where there is no surface casing yet. It's installed, the diverter, which is this one, it's installed on the conductor pipe. And it have, uh, this one, it has two wings. And we will open this one according to the wind direction. So it has only unload preventer. So the unload preventer can be closed around anything, any pipe, any shape, or even uh, on an open hole. So the unload preventer, is common between the uh, the diverter and also in case of the uh, blowout preventer. Both of them has the uh, unroll preventer. And the mechanism, if we have a kick, the mechanism is that the diverter working is 
First of all, you have to open one wing of the diverter. Then you can close the under preventer and you have to keep bumping the fluid, continue the circulation process till you control the well. For sure, if the pressure is high and your drilling fluid will not come back to the tanks, so it will go away. This is why if you visit a rig today, you will see a very large pool filled with seawater. And in case of we have a kick, we have a diverter, so the fluid will go away. So we can use this water just to control the wind. As a rule of thumb, we have to keep the hole filled, filled with water or filled with the drilling fluid to be in safe side. So we have the uh, blowout preventer. As you can see, there are many equipment associated with the, B, uh, the BOB and it's installed in the uh, casing head. So we have to have a casing ahead to install the BOB and the casing ahead will be a part of the surface casing. After we run the surface casing, we put the casing head. And this is the first wheel head uh, equipment installed in the rig. It's welded to the surface casing and it's fixed also in the uh, cellar, in the floor. And we have vertical separator, we have shock manifold and we have the comb unit or the controlling unit of the uh, BOP. So I explained to use the diverter in different ways. So we have the casing head. So this is the first section of the well head. Uh, it's welded to the surface casing and the BOP installed above this one. We have the drilling spool. So between the rams, between the rams of the BOP, we have the drilling spool. Usually there is a pipe ram. After this, we have the drilling spool. After this, we have different rams. Finally, we have the BOP, uh, the honorable preventer. And the drilling uh, spool, it provides connection for the choke line. So there is a line go from here to the choke line. And there is a line for the kill line, just in case if we need to kill the well from the analyst. So we have a path from coming from the pump to the kill line, and it will go through the drilling spool to the anodes. So we have pipe rams, and you should understand that the pipe ram is responsible to close around a specific size of the drill pipe. And for example, if this is a five inch uh, ram, pipe ram, so this one will close around, it will provide a seal around this one. And we should have a hydraulic system coming from the control, controlling system just to close, to push this piston to close or open. In normal situations, the pipe ram should be open and it will be only closed either during the testing the BOB or in case if we have any issue or any kick in the well. Uh, maybe you have a single pipe ram, maybe you have a double pipe ram, maybe you have triple pipe ram. But usually we have at least one pipe ram below the drilling spool. We have one pipe ram above. And the, as I told you, this is a backup for each other. If we have a kick, the normal situation that we will close. The first thing, if we have BOP installed and we have a kick, so the first step that we will do what? We will close the annular preventer because the annular preventer can close around anything. If your string is down on bottom, a bit on, bot uh, on bottom, you are lucky because you can control the kick and circulate it. If not, it will be a big issue. You have to go through different wool control mechanisms or methods to put the string out or use any other uh, way for wool control method. We have blind ramp. So in case of we don't have a drill string inside the hole, so we can use the blind ram to close. As I told you, we will use the first thing, we'll use the anaerobic preventer, but in case of the is if there is leak or there is anything, we can use the blind ram just to close around open hole. We have shear ram, just in case of emergency, we don't have time to close or circulate and it's very, very dangerous. So we'll apply the shearing force. We have a shear ram and this shear ram will cut the pipe completely and there is a way to hang the bottom part to prevent it from 
falling down. So we call it shear ram. Some of the rams combining the shear ram and the blind ram at the same time, we call it blind shear ram. And to avoid the point of a specific size, as I told you, the pipe ram should, should hold the pressure and make seal, provide seal around a specific size. So we have, they develop a new ram called variable ram. So we have different uh, size and this one, every one of this one will be more according to the size that you have. Using the uh, hydraulic system coming from the uh, accum uh, accumulators or the common. This is the common unit. This is the main part of the uh, control system. It contains the hydraulic in these cylinders and the pressure in this cylinder usually is 300, uh, 3,000 3, psi. And it contains hoses or lines connected between this one and different part of the POV. If you look to the POV, you will find that every valve, every line is connected with the hydraulic lines. And for sure, we have different cages here to provide the manifold pressure and the accumulator pressure and also the anaerobic pressure. And we have the uh, four wave valves that provide different positions as this is very, very important to be known. And we should monitor the pressure of these gauges because every part of this one has a different pressure. And we have a pressure regulator that provides the required pressure for every part from this one. The uh, number five system, the fifth system is the power system. So we have generator, different generators. Besides the rig, we have the different generator and it's working by diesel. And the main function of the generator is to provide electricity to the rig. As you know, we're working either on offshore operation, so there is no electricity, or in the desert where there is no electricity provided. So we have our generator there, and this generator is responsible for providing the electricity to the fluid system, to the rotating system, and to the hoisting system. So this is the main three parts that provide that required power, which will come from the uh, generators. The last system that we have is the monitoring system. So as I told you, starting from 2013, 2014, uh, all of the drilling rigs has a monitoring system. It has a real-time sensors uh, that provide data about the well depths, water bit, rotary speed, uh, rotary torque, pump pressure, pump rate, flow rate, flow return, rate of penetration, the whole fluid, the fluid property, and the pit level. Till now, some of these properties are uh, automated. We can make it every one second, two seconds, every one feet, whatever the mechanism is that we need. And some of this property, like the fluid property, is not automated yet. Uh, as you know, we have the uh, fourth industrial revolution 4.0, and we have a huge application of the artificial intelligence because we need to use these methods to uh, have a benefit of the huge record of the data that we have while drilling operation. As I told you, one of the issues that we have is the fluid property, which is measured twice a day. Uh, the drilling engineer, the mud engineer, uh, is measuring the whole drilling fluid twice a day. And in case of emergency, they measure this one four times a day, which means that at least 12 hours, you didn't have any record of the plastic because they yield to point the mother geological properties. And we depend on the frequent measurement of the mud density and the marsh funnel time. So just uh, to avoid this one, we develop uh, a pattern which is relating to uh, automated marsh funnel. And the main objective of this one is to provide a continuous uh, measurement every like five minutes of the mud density and the marsh funnel time. And we developed a complete setup of the artificial intelligence tools that can predict the plastic viscosity, yield point, flow behavior index, flow consistency index. And this can provide a huge data uh, while drilling. In addition to this one, this is just a schematic of the automated marsh funnel. 
it will give us an indication about the uh, drilling, I mean, the mud tank itself. Because, you know, one of the big issues that we face while drilling the high pressure, high temperature wells is the settling of the barite. So we need to have initial indication about the settling of the barite. We call it the barite sagging issue. So uh, we can have sample from top of the tank and middle of the tank and the bottom of the tank we can measure the property, I mean the density and the marsh funnel. If there is a deviation from the density measurement, that means that the solid particles are settled down in the hole, in the tank, and this will give indication about the problem. So uh, the monitoring system is very, very important, and the application of the artificial intelligence or the machine learning and drilling operation become very, very important. And I hope, inshallah, at one day, I, I will give a session about the application of artificial intelligence on different drilling. So just to summarize about the structure, we have around six systems, which is very important. And uh, they are common between different rigs. I mean, the drilling rigs, uh, offshore and onshore. We have the hoisting system. We have the rotating system. We have the circulating system. We have the uh, power system controlling the system, and finally, the monitoring system. I'd like to uh, thank you very much for your listening, your time, your participation in this one. I hope you understand the material. If you have any questions, uh, Dr. Jarek and Dina has my email. Thank you can send me an email, and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Salah, for this exciting presentation. Uh, really, it's very informative. And I have some questions from the audience to you, please. Uh, okay, the, first, sure. the first one it was um, the repeated question from a lot of the audience. Um, is the Derek and the yes. Mast uh, are the same things? Yes, yes. The Derek, or we refer to the Derek, is the, the upper part of the uh, rig, which is uh, started from the floor till the crown block. So we call it the Derek or the Mast. Okay. Thank you. The second uh, question, um, is a diverter has the same function of the POP? Uh, no, it's not exactly. The diverter is used to divert the fluid, the drilling fluid, just in case of emergency, just in case if we have a kick and we have only the conductor pipe. So we have to divert as a fluid away from the, uh, the rig to be in safe side. So the mechanism, even the mechanism, the diverter is working, it will never apply a pad pressure on the formation. And this is the main reason we didn't install the BOP on the conductor pipe. The first reason, because the BOP is very heavy and the conductor pipe is very shallow. It's around mm -hmm. uh, 100 feet to 300 feet in land. And uh, as we have in some of the Western desert, uh, Helda company, they just put around seven to 10 feet pipe and just to isolate the way the unconsolidated formation so we cannot install the BOP. So but the mechanism for the BOP is to apply a back pressure. Just when you have a kick you will close the anode preventer and you will close the valves so there is no movement from the well at this moment and you will wait until the pressure is stabilized. So when you read the shutting casing pressure this will affect on your formation and the prevent any more Fluid coming from the formation. This is what we call it a back pressure. Okay. Uh, and as said, as this question about uh, the the types of rig, what the type, yeah. what the rig type uh, are used is much expensive in the offshore operation. For sure, the drill ship, according to the water depths, if you go from, if you increase the uh, water depths, it will be the rent for the drill ship will be very expensive. So the water depths will, will determine what is the expensive one or what is the high cost one. Okay. Okay, the next question, what is the main purpose of the Kelly? Uh, as I explained it to you, we, we, we have different rotating system. So mm -hmm. in all the rigs or on the water rigs, so the rigs that we use to drill water wells. So mm -hmm. we use the Kelly. So the Kelly is used to transmit the rotation from the rotary table to the drill string. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Dr. Salah, are, are you connected? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, uh, because we are running off time, I have only one question. It's the, la the last one. Um, someone asked that there is, uh, is, is there is a reason behind different pipes length is used in the, the oil field in general, just like we have uh, ones uh, uh, 29, 30, and 31, and so on. Yeah. Okay, so according to manufacturer, the drill, the drill pipe or the joint of the drill pipe, it changes from 30, 30.5, and 31. And mm -hmm. for sure, we have some short pipes, especially when it comes to the uh, color, because we, did, we determine the length of the color based on the weight of it. So for example, if, uh, if we need uh, 40 joint, so we didn't have a 40 joint of the color, so we will use 30 joint of one color in addition to a short pipe of 10 feet of that color. So uh, it depends on the factory, and there is no difference between 29 and 30, but there is no 29. The most common mm -hmm. ones are used is 30 feet from 30 to 31 and uh, for the color is the same uh, as the casing joint is 40 feet almost and also you have a short joint of the casing because it depends on the, the depth that you have to determine the exact depth you need to sometimes you have a short joint of the casing and uh, this is up to my knowledge okay uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Salah, for this uh, inform inform informative session. And thank you, all of our audience. I hope you enjoyed the session uh, and see you again. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Zdina. And uh, thank you, Dr. 